London. And Charles Gibson. Tomorrow, Tom Selleck talks about the sequel of Three Men and a Baby live from the set. Plus, Joel Siegel reviews Dick Tracy on Good Morning America. This is ABC. Just ahead on the 10 o'clock report, Ames mops up the damage that flooded rivers left behind. This is Stuart Maddox in Des Moines. More preparations are underway for more rain that may come tonight. I'll have a live report. And the city council takes another swing at eliminating alcohol in Des Moines parks. More severe weather may be headed our way. Don will have the latest. And Mark's here with sport. The news is next. Stay with us. about another advantage Ford has over Chevy. Your Ford dealer's June truck sale with special deals on every Ford truck plus up to $1,500 cash back. Buy this F-150 and we throw an air and automatic at no extra charge. Save $2,500 on Ranger, America's number one compact pickup plus special deals on Aerostar and introducing the all new Explorer. Now that is one nice truck. So if you're looking for a truck, go see your Ford dealer in June. Lens Crafters presents another breakthrough, new featherweight lenses. Anything you can do for a really heavy prescription? Try our new featherweights. They're so light you hardly know you've got them on. Featherweight lenses, lighter, slimmer, and oh so comfortable. Available only from Lens Crafters in-store labs in about an hour. New featherweights. They're so comfortable. For all your eyewear needs, Lens Crafters custom crafted eyeglasses in about an hour. Lens Crafters, Merle Hay Mall, inside main entrance. You're watching the Channel 5 News 10 o'clock report. Well, they said it's a possibility that there's going to be another swell coming through tonight. As long as you're sitting here, might as well leave them here. I'll put them back up tonight then if I have to. Cecil Sheldon is one of many store owners who's not prepared to let go of his sandbags. There's concern tonight that more trouble is on the way. Good evening. Those sandbags were the only things that turned the tide of floodwaters over the weekend, and they may get more use. 
For the latest on our chances of rain, let's go to Don Novak in the Channel 5 Weather Center. Don? Okay, the chances of rain are excellent. There's stuff moving in already. Now, the big question is, is it going to flood in the Squaw Creek or the, the uh, Raccoon River? And, and that I can't answer for you. There is, though, a flash flood watch now that's been issued by the National Weather Service for the western half of Iowa. It does include the Ames area as well as Des Moines and all points to the west. Thunderstorms are starting to move in and they have some heavy rains with them. The ground's already saturated. It's just a question of who gets the heavy rain, where it falls, and how fast it comes down. As far as other watches, there is a severe thunderstorm watch posted for the southwestern corner of Iowa. It does include uh, Cass, Adams, and Taylor counties in our viewing area. And there's also another one out for a large part of Kansas and parts of the Dakotas. All of those are valid till 1 o'clock. Thunderstorms are developing out to the west and they're moving our way, so it looks like we'll be sticking around here at least till sign off tonight and maybe even later if uh, conditions warrant that. So we'll have a complete update a little bit later in the show. But yes, it's going to rain. Who's going to get the heaviest uh, is going to be a question for anybody anywhere in the western half of the state. So back to you right now. Okay, another late night for you, Don. Thanks a lot. We'll talk with you later. Well, the list of counties declared disaster areas is growing. Today, the governor added 15 to the list, including Story, Boone, and Madison. That brings the total to 23 from the weekend floods. If you live in one of these counties and you need help, you can call State Disaster Relief at 1-800-467-9029. Field offices are also being set up to take requests for disaster aid. It's still tough to get around. Several roads are closed right now, and they'll still be closed when you head for work tomorrow morning. They are Fleur Drive, Valley Drive, and Maori and Southeast 20th around Dean Lake. Now, if you take these roads to work, you'll need to find another route and give yourself some extra time in the morning. And there could be more traffic problems in the morning if the rain moves in tonight. Another soaking could also put dirt levees to the test. In one neighborhood near the Raccoon River, the levees are holding back a wall of water, protecting many homes. That's where Stuart Maddox joins us live with an update on the situation. Stuart. Galen, uh, Betty, this is one of those levees right here that we've been talking about so much. This was one of the levees that was going to give away last night when waters were rising so fast. Now today, many of the residents we spoke to feel much safer knowing that we've had one day of bone dry weather, but I have bad news to bear to confirm Don Novak's forecast just as we were driving up here and lately we have been seeing cloudbursts to the west, very large ones, which will likely bring more rain to the Des Moines area. It hasn't started sprinkling yet, but we will let you know as this live shot and the program progresses. Now, as we said, many residents said they felt more safe today knowing that the uh, weather was uh, a lot drier and there was a lot of home uh, cleaning up today by many residents but with this new weather forecast city officials are worrying that these levees may not hold again even without new rain tonight the raccoon will continue to crest throughout the week we get a rainfall we could be in a very serious situation and over top and uh, that's not going to happen unless we get a severe rainfall within the next 72 hours because we are dropping slightly, although the rivers are holding. Many shop owners in high water areas are keeping the sandbags in place that volunteers filled for them this weekend. I think that I can probably speak for all the merchants when uh, I tell you we're very grateful for the turnout. Uh, With all the cleanup, workers at the Better Business Bureau expect a flood of calls from homeowners who have been solicited by fraudulent repair companies. Just because we've had such a devastating flood in this area, don't think that the first person that comes by can fix all the ills of the flood. Take your time, step back, look twice. Today, the Bureau issued a warning to homeowners in flooded areas. Be wary of repair workers going door to door, Bureau officials say, and of companies wanting money up front for repairs. Today, water levels along the Raccoon were a little more than two inches short of the highest water ever seen along Fleur Drive. Back on this month in 1947, the river crested at 19.8 feet. And where we are at now, the Raccoon River has peaked at 19.6 feet, just slightly below that record. At this hour, the river stands at just over 19 feet, 19.02 feet. 19.02 feet, I think I said that correctly, just over 19 feet. And the National Weather Service says that that is going to fluctuate about a half foot either way for the next two days. That is without any new rainfall. And with that new rainfall, the whole picture could change considerably. We will, of course, update you as uh, things progress out here. Galen, Betty? Okay, Stuart, we'll keep in touch. Well, in Ames, they're hoping the worst is over. Businesses as well as residents on the south side began the tedious task of cleaning up the muck and mire. 
Some homes were hit hard. This house lost its foundation as floodwaters crashed through it. The Red Cross has set up an emergency post to help those still wading through the water. Okay, we have some people in the south part of town, South Russell area, that have uh, water clear up to their first floor, uh, completely filling up the basement, basement seven or eight feet. Main problem there is that they don't have electricity, so they can't power their sump pumps to get rid of the water. If you need any emergency help, the Red Cross headquarters is located at 426 Fifth Street, or you can call 232 5704. Well, every cloud is said to have a silver lining, and in this case, it's Des Moines water nitrate levels. Today, they measured 7.7 .7 parts per million, well under the guidelines considered safe by health officials. Nitrate levels topped out at 11.2 parts per million last week, but all the rain we got over the weekend diluted the concentrations and put us back in the safe zone. Well, residents in Shadyside, Ohio, began to bury the dead today from last week's floods there. The death toll now stands at 21. Searchers are still looking for another 14 people who are listed as missing. The efforts are being directed at the debris-clogged Ohio River, and the rain is still falling. Jacksonville police say a gunman was loaded for war when he went on a shooting rampage at an auto loan company. James Powell went from desk to desk methodically murdering employees before he turned the gun on himself. Eight people are dead, another five are in critical but stable condition. Some of the victims were shot seven or eight times each. The company had recently repossessed Powell's car, but investigators don't know if that was the motive. Huge tar balls are expected to start rolling up on the Texas coast tomorrow. Cleanup crews are prepared for the worst as the 30-mile oil slick from the Megaborg gets ready to hit land. An unusual twist here, it's that state officials are actually hoping most of the oil turns up on the beaches. The alternative is to have it contaminate marshes, and that could threaten the wildlife there. Well, still to come, floodwaters have made it difficult for some firefighters. And concert fans make a grandstand play at the state fairgrounds. Stay with us.